Joining me now to discuss Iran's nuclear talks and the future enrichment plans for the country is University of Southern California professor Josh Lockman. Josh, are you encouraged by the news uh, coming out of Kazakhstan? You know, Mike, thank you for having me. I'm cautiously optimistic about what we've seen take place in Kazakhstan between Iran and the permanent five powers plus one plus Germany. I think that this is a productive step, obviously, in trying to reach that elusive yet uh, highly sought after grand bargain uh, with the regime in Tehran. Uh, these talks now l lead the way for, you know, a productive proposal that could be reached, which would allow for face saving, essentially, for the Iranian regime. I, I think the key takeaway for the international community is that the right me uh, monitoring mechanisms need to be put in place uh, where the IEA is allowed really to, to have stringent uh, monitoring of Iran's nuclear um, you know, energy program so that if Iran continues to enrich uranium at that 20 percent level, uh, it is not allowed to divert it for weaponized purposes, if, you know, is, if that's what they choose to do. Is that likely? Well, the key thing here is that many are critical of the process generally uh, that has taken place between the permanent five powers plus one and Iran uh, because uh, many have stated that this has allowed the regime to continue a clandestine nuclear weapons program within the charade of international diplomacy. So I think uh, the, there is a key window of opportunity here for a diplomatic resolution. That's something that President Obama has repeatedly stated. Uh, that sentiment is shared, I think, across the world. However, uh, negotiations cannot continue indefinitely. Uh, there needs to be uh, kind of a, a, you know, a end point to these negotiations where if the regime uh, does not reach uh, a successful settlement with the international community over this, uh, further punitive action will be taken to stop Iran from what is seemingly becoming a nuclear weapons power. You know, Josh, uh, you watch this very closely. I know I have as well. And uh, the last round of talks seemed like they were positive and then they collapsed. What's, a, right. what's to make us think that's not going to happen this time around? It's an excellent point. It, it's quite possible this could happen again. Uh, that's the real danger and fear here. Obviously, uh, you know, everyone was encouraged at least slightly by what they saw out of Almaty uh, the last couple days. There are technical talks coming next month in Istanbul, and like you mentioned, in April, the second round of high-level talks in, in Kazakhstan again. I, I think this time around, there is significant pressure on the Iranian regime to have meaningful and genuine negotiations with the international community. Uh, I think in many ways this is not a charade for them any longer. Their economy is hurting. The sanctions are taking a toll. Uh, we've seen that with the devaluation of the Iranian currency uh, you know, over the last year. And I think in many ways Iran would like a face-saving approach that allows them to continue to enrich uranium at a, you know, for peaceful purposes, uh, as they're entitled to under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, while opening up their program, essentially, for much more scrutiny from the international community. Because, frankly, over the last decade, we've seen uh, really uh, no, little to no uh, you know, genuine efforts by the Iranian regime to come clean about their program. And that's raised a lot of eyebrows, obviously. And we've seen many intelligence reports around the globe that suspect Iran is close to becoming a nuclear weapons power. So it's disconcerting on the one hand, but because of the efforts that have been made by the international community to prod Iran back to the negotiating table, there is a glimmer of hope that there is, uh, these are not disingenuous uh, measures being taken by the Josh, regime. Josh, I'm the afraid table. we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. From Los Angeles. Uh, this